and this morning we're learning more about the 10 victims killed in that senseless mass shooting at a Boulder, Colorado supermarket. They range in ages from 20 to 65. They include a veteran police officer, employees at the King Supers grocery store where the shooting took place, and a young man who wanted to be a pilot. The suspect, 21-year-old Ahmad Alyssa, faces 10 counts of first-degree murder for allegedly killing people with a weapon he bought just six days before the shooting. The violence has inspired and renewed the debate over gun laws in this country. Earlier on CBS This Morning, we spoke about that with Vice President Kamala Harris. It is time for Congress to act and stop with the false choices. This is not about getting rid of the Second Amendment. It's simply about saying we need reasonable gun safety laws. There is no reason why we have assault weapons on the streets of a civil society. They are weapons of war. They are designed to kill a lot of people quickly. And they so often do. Our lead national correspondent, David Begno, is in Boulder, Colorado for us, where we're going to stay with the victims. He spoke to two friends of one of them. David, good morning to you again. Good morning. Last night I had a chance to speak with Janet and Hope Cotton. They were really close friends with a woman named Lynn Murray. Lynn was one of the victims, and Lynn had an interesting life. Over the last 40 or so years, she lived in a few different places around the country, worked for some of the fashion magazines in New York City, and then had jobs driving for Uber. But most recently, she was working for Instacart, which is a service that basically they go into the grocery store, they shop for you, and then they deliver. Turns out Hope was actually in the grocery store. She ran into Lynn. They chatted about food, talked about, hey, how you doing? It just so happened that Hope checked out, got home, and heard that there was a shooting at the grocery store and thought, wait a minute, I wonder if Lynn was still inside. She was smiling, we were laughing, just talking about cauliflower and whatever else, and, you know, just doing her rounds, like, this is a good order, quick 50 bucks. This is Hope Cotton. She told us about the last time she saw family friend Len Murray just minutes before the shooting started. I checked out and by the time that I got back here, which is barely a five minute commute, my little sister called me like frantically and, you know, just clicked to me. I was like, Len wasn't at the cash register yet. And I just like told my mom, I'm like, Lynn's in there still. And then like when it left my mouth, I was kind of like, oh no. And you know, she turned right to her phone to like start texting Lynn. Now the Cottons spoke with Lynn's family, letting them know that she was still inside the store. Hours after the rampage was over, Janet, along with Lynn's husband and other victims' families, were all gathered together waiting for answers about their loved ones. But those answers didn't come for more than 12 hours. I said to the whoever the police officer was who was in charge of the meeting, I said, okay, well, let's just assume there's 10 people and one of them was a police officer. And so there's nine people and we're all gathered in a room. So are we gonna go around and count how many families are here? So everybody looked at each other and they're like nine. Janet says it was just after 3 a.m. the next morning that the coroner's office called Lynn's husband to tell him that she was gone stomach and knots, trembling, just everything you do when you're just like trying to keep it cool, but you, you're letting it like the worst feelings. And I mean, I love Lynn really, still do dearly. And how are you dealing with the loss? This is my mom's best friend of like 20 years. I just want Lynn's legacy to not be this moment for none of these people. Their legacies, these aren't just like names of people on a list. Like these are real souls that are loved and like will continue to be loved now that they're not here anymore. You know, Gail, one of the things that Lynn and Hope was telling me was that Lynn and her family lived just right up the street, probably a two minute drive from the grocery store. And they said, David, from now on, Lynn's family is going to have to drive by that grocery store every day when they go somewhere. Every day they're going to have to drive right by the crime scene. I was wondering about that, David. I mean, there's a picture that we keep seeing on the news. You just showed it in your piece of the bride, the way she's looking at her dad, who's no longer with us. And then yeah. we learn that she's now pregnant. It's just it's the stories that get me every time. Thank you very much, David.